Till now, we have seen and used a singly linked node. Now, let's see a doubly linked node and understand what it is and how it works. A doubly linked node, just like a singly linked node, holds some data and points to its next node. But what is different in a doubly linked node is that it can also point to its previous node. So a doubly linked node points to its next as well as previous nodes and thus we can move back and forth in a doubly linked node unlike a singly linked one using which we could only move forward or the next nodes. Note that if you create a node object and don't initialize its reference, Java automatically makes it point to null objects. Now let's see how a doubly linked node is used to create a doubly linked list. As shown here, in a doubly linked list, every node points to its next 10 previous nodes. Now we want to insert a new element, say 8, at the head, alright? So let's see the final state of our doubly linked list after we have inserted the new node 8 at the head. And this will help us visualize which references to change or update in the list to be able to add this new node. So as you can see from the final state of the list, we need to make the next node of the new node, which is 8, point to node 5, which is the current head of the linked list. That is in our Java code, we can say that node.next node is equal to linked list dot head all right next as you can see we have to make the previous node of 5 point to node 8 right and node 5 is still the current head of the linked list and right now its previous node is pointing to null and we need to make it point to node 8 so in our program we can say that linked list dot current head dot previous node is equal to the new node which is being inserted in the list and finally there is one more reference to be updated the new node has to become the head node of the list so that's easy to do and this is how we insert a new element at the head of the doubly linked list now let's implement this in java and I want you to pause the video here and try to implement it yourself before seeing the solution. Let us first create a new class and name it doubly linked node. Inside this class, we declare the member variables data. Let's keep it of int type and references to next node and previous node. Then we generate the getter and setter methods for the next node and previous node variables like we did in the node class. And we can use Eclipse to generate these getter and setters for us. Let's write a constructor for this class so that we can create these node objects from integer data. Now let's write another class and name it doubly linked list. And inside this class, we first declare the member variable head of type doubly linked node. Now let's write insert at head method, which takes an int type of parameter, which is the data. Inside this method, we first create a new object of doubly linked node type and name it new node. Then we set the new node's next node as the current head, right? That was the first thing we did in the animation. Then we check if the current head is not equal to null. We set the current head's previous node as the new node. Well, we have to do this null check because if the list is empty, the head will be null. And if we try to access the previous node of a null element, we would get a null pointer exception. All right. And finally, we make the new node as the head of the linked list.
We can also implement the length method inside doubly linked list class, which tells us the number of nodes in the list. But it is same as what you would have already implemented for a regular singly linked list class. So I will just leave it as an exercise here. Similarly, we can override the to string method in the doubly linked node and doubly linked list classes, which are quite easy to follow. Now let's create a new class and name it doubly linked list demo. And write a main method inside it. And inside this main method, we create a doubly linked list type object. Let's call it integers. Then we add a few integers to this list. And then we print the list out. Let's run the program. And we can see the order in which the elements are added in the list. You may also want to use the debugger in the IDE to navigate through the linked list to see that all the next nodes and previous nodes are connected properly.